a motion to accept the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Moved by Jim, seconded by Kathy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. There are extra agendas if anyone wants an extra agenda. <coughs> The next is approval of minutes from the regular meeting of October 18, 2017. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any errors, changes? I was not here, so I'll abstain. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Kathy voted yes. yes. Okay. Motion passes four to one abstention from Fred. Thank you. Um, I have nothing under correspondence <coughs> tonight. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, some information on the state budget under the monthly budget report. Um, public comment. The next item, I don't expect you to do anything tonight necessarily, but I did want to bring to your attention that the ball field at 97 Airline Avenue, which is known as Brownstone Park, is confusing because many people think it's the quarry park. So we would like to think about, and we will check with Parks and Rec um, as to whether we'll call it Nolan Field or William Nolan Park. So maybe if we could reflect that in the minutes, Laura, it would give some people some information as to whether we would consider for a future meeting um, a change from Brownstone Park to William Nolan Park or Field? Does it say Nolan Field we right now? Nolan Field. Nolan Field. Yeah. Yeah. We refer to a lot, but you're right. Maybe on any official things, yeah. so we can get rid of that confusion. Yeah. So I'll talk with Sean. Okay. So we'll refer that to Parks and Recreation Commission. Get a recommendation from them. Many people's GPS is bringing them to that right. park um, instead of to the one on Brownstone Avenue. Under monthly budget report. Um, I did not ask Tom to come tonight because we still haven't had a chance to really analyze the revenues in light of the budget that just passed by the um, governor and the legislature. But I did have him run for you the um, revenues and expenditures to date, 11-1-2017. And as you can see, the state revenues are not reflected, of course, because we haven't received them. Um, I don't think he felt there was anything of any magnitude at this point to alert you to other than what he's told you in the past, um, and he needs to fine tune these numbers. What I did want to call your attention to is the handout under your agenda. And I may have emailed this to you previously, but I thought we could at least go over it together. And what this is, is from CCM, the adopted fiscal year 18 state budget impact on Portland. And it is comparing not what the governor's numbers were in February, which is what we based our budget on, but rather what we received actually for fiscal year 17 versus what we'll be expected to receive for fiscal year 18. So part of the analysis will be determination how these numbers compare with what was in our budget. There's one area that I know we're gonna to have to spend a little time on, and that is the education cost sharing grant in relation to the excess cost grant. You may remember we um, considered all of that money was coming to general government, but it is not, it's going to be excess cost grant will go directly to the Board of Education, and then the education cost sharing comes to us, and then that goes over to the Board of Education. So there may be some bookkeeping changes necessary but if you compare um, adult education for the two fiscal years, we're up by $236. If you compare the education cost sharing grant between fiscal year 17 and fiscal year 18, we are down by $218,188. If you compare the um, local capital improvement planning money grant, we did not receive any for fiscal year 17. So they, re they did replenish that grant to us, so that would be a plus $116,286. The Mohegan Pequot grant, there is no change. There is no change for a pilot. We get very little pilot, $199. That's payment in lieu of taxes. 
Town Aid Road is exactly the same for the two fiscal years, which is $239,766. Grants for municipal projects remains the same at $90,840. The one change is the revenue sharing grant, um, which the, we received $192,715 in fiscal year 17. And we will not receive that. So that's a reduction of 192,715. Instead, there's this new grant, which I don't know too much about, other than it's called the Municipal Stabilization Grant, and it is to give municipalities a little more money, and that is an increase of $48,096. So in comparison for all these grants for the two fiscal years, we are down about 5% for the grants, um, which is about $246,285. There is no municipal contribution requirement for the teacher's retirement system, which is something we fought very hard on, and we won that one. Special education is funded as it has been through the excess cost grant system, which is not what we put in the budget. So that's the bookkeeping change we'll have to look at. For us, the motor vehicle cap does not affect us because we taxed residents at 32 mills. Um, the new mill rate for towns that have higher mill rates will be 39 in fiscal year 18. And in fiscal year 19, they're raising it to 45 mills, um, which will be of some help to cities, but it helps the state because they won't have to make up the difference for, for those towns. Um, the FY, this does not affect us. Alliance district, we are not an alliance district. so. In essence, we made out much better than what had been talked about in many iterations. We should be able to accommodate a $246,000 reduction given uh, the knowledge that we have and the fact that we have another um, several months before the end of the fiscal year. So I'll open it up for any questions or comments from the board. So we'll, we'll continue to study this as, as uh, we move forward in terms of our budget. But as I said, we did much better than many of the matters that have been talked about previously. We did better than we had anticipated, yes. I think. Yeah. Much better. Which is good. It is good. Could be better. <laughs> Always. But it's not, it's not terrible, you know, and I think not having to share in the teacher's pension <coughs> fund is really wonderful for every community. I agree. I agree. That is not something we're in support of at all. And I'm glad that our legislators agreed and uh, uh, Christy Carpino and Art Linares, our rep representative and senator respectively, did vote yes for the budget. Um, and uh, I had spoken to them over the course of the season. Uh, more recently, I'd spoken to Christy and she told me that she did vote for it. So we have her full support as well. And we thank her for her work and Senator Lamaris as well. Number nine is appointments to boards and commissions. And Kathy has a couple. an alternate to regular. So um, I'd like to nominate Ann Fisher from alternate to regular on the Portland Route 17 Recreational Complex Building Committee. I'll second it. Uh, alternate to regular, I'm sorry. She's currently an alternate, I yeah. think, Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. That was seconded by Jim. Yeah. It's in your it's in, it should be in your packet too, Laura, for the spelling. Which could be helpful. The last page in our packets. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Kathy? And then I'd like to nominate as a alternate. Jen Oliva, O L I V A, on the same board, Route 17. I'll second that too. Seconded by Jim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Kathy. Any other appointments tonight? This is the only one that we were alerted to. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll go on to refunds of excess payment. I'd like to uh, make a motion to refund. $127.15 to Justin E. Lissitano. Second. Seconded by Kitch. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I'd like to make a motion to refund 
$171.36 to Lawrence B. Nicholas. Second. Second by Kitch. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I'd like to make a motion to refund $19.04 to Lewis Merck. Second. Seconded by Kitch. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I'd like to make a motion to refund $10.11 to Joseph M. Campos. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I'd like to make a motion to refund $203.26 to Kevin D. Flipchick. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I'd like to make a motion to refund $24.13 to Tamara L. Rosado. Second. Also seconded by Kitch. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The next is status reports, and I just wanted to let you know that um, after the terrible storm that we had on Sunday into Monday, we did experience um, quite a few outages, about 500 or so, I think, at the peak. The more difficult problem was that many of our roads in various areas, and especially uh, east of 17, were blocked. So um, after um, Christy and I working with Eversource to uh, request, uh, we did get a crew in from Eversource last night, and they were able to clear the roads with our two crews. So all roads are open and safe for people to get to school, so we were able to send children to school today, and um, we were told by Eversource that power on a global sense would be completed by noon tomorrow, which is Thursday. So this, this was not um, the, how can I say this? This was a very difficult um, situation. And the most difficult situation, I'll tell you, was the, the poor communication that we had between the utility and the town. And I've never seen it quite like this. So I intend, once all the power is restored and things calm down, to work with Christy and Chief Shea in how we can better um, receive communications and how the system can perhaps be better managed and monitored. One concern that I have is there were no crews readily available for us to yeah. deactivate these wires and then have our crews go in and clear the debris. Um, and once we demanded that, and I'll tell you, I had to really come down pretty hard on Eversource get one crew in here last night so that we could uh, open the roads. So I'm not happy, Christy's not happy, but together we're going to uh, approach and get better results along with public safety. It's a very, very difficult situation. So Susan, I, I, I guess I, I have this question uh, as to how does Eversource determine where they're going to send their crews? Because we had folks ready to work, but they couldn't because Eversource didn't right. come and, and disconnect us mm -hmm. or ensure us the wires right. were dead. Um, so I think I, that would be a question I would like to answer. What, what makes their determination as to when they go to a, a certain town? Right, yep. Well, uh, the one thing that they did tell me is that all 911 calls for um, obviously activated uh -huh. wires is the first thing they were dealing with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the nice. second thing they deal with is making sure that some of the life safety places have either have electricity or have safety. Um, but it gets um, every storm seems to be a challenge, mm -hmm. and this one in particular, I think, was more communication. Okay, I, I was they, learning things. Maybe they weren't expecting it, right? and, and it was wonder. taken by surprise, which that's what you should be prepared for, but I think that was what happened. So then just to start by getting their people in to man the phones and all this, you know, takes So all time. personnel in place, but right. I think, I think it, it took a little it while for been. that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So what, the what, four days ahead of time they had said we were going to have a storm, and that didn't amount to much. Right. So then they were forecasting almost the same kind of storm. And then finally toward the end, they said the winds were going to be much worse. Yes. So maybe it was that. But, you know, I think the response was incredibly slow. It is. It's, it's not it's still over. Right. It's not over. I mean, we're, we're four days out. Right. Yeah. Susan, in the, in yes. the future, um, 
from what you said and, and questions from Kitch and Kathy, it would it would appear that um, our town crew, if they came in, if they came in for a, a relatively short period, however long that would be, mm -hmm. and didn't have to stay, but just came in, yes, and deactivated the wires, and uh, and could our town crew go or not go? They can't touch those wires. But they could clear the ropes. No, but no, of course they have to make sure to the wires in. are deactivated. They can't touch those wires. They can't know for sure that so, they're not live. So the town, in, in the effect, town and the to town wait. couldn't do anything until right. they came in and stayed, you're saying, not just came right. in. Right, and, oh, and they would have friend. to come in and deactivate the lines to make sure that nothing is live. They right. have to wait for Eversource to do that first. Then our guys can come cut trees. Yeah, but physically, clear. would Eversource have to remain in on the site that would because it would appear that the I think once they're there they really want to fix them though usually well what happened in this case Fred is that um, Eversource did send two crews last <coughs> night and they worked side by side with two of our crews mm -hmm. um, along with our backhoe and our backloader and what I said to our liaison was all I want are cleared roads you don't necessarily have to stay and, and put the electricity back on, I know that there are other critical needs that you have. However, we need to have those roads cleared. Mm -hmm. Not that people, most people could get out, but the route was so circuitous that it was dangerous. I mean, they'd go one way and then there'd be a blocked road. They'd have to go the other way. And that's very dangerous in terms of emergency. So what I want to talk with them about is having a, a crew assigned to a town to make sure those wires, as Kathy said, are deactivated, and then our crews can clear the roads once Eversource says deactivated, clear it, um, because it's it's too long to wait for these roads uh, to be cleared, and it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they can do this. It's something I really am going to push for that that crew be assigned to this town. So. I mean, one of the things that utilities have to do is definitely um, <coughs> recover from disasters. I mean, disaster recovery systems are part of their business. And it's part of our business as well. And we were prepared. Our crews, our equipment, um, and, and supplies, we were ready. So it was two, three, storm was Sunday, don't mm -hmm. expect that, Monday, Tuesday, we were able to get the roads cleared between 8 and midnight. Mm -hmm. And we had to pay overtime, and we had to use our equipment, which we're willing to contribute to have people safe. But the methodology for making safe is something we need to talk about. And, and, and it's been suggested that residents be part of that so that they can learn and understand how recovery occurs. So just got to be careful. Very careful. You know, oh, absolutely. absolutely! It has to be done by Eversource. And maybe that. Maybe you're right that, that that residents should be part of that conversation. I mean, so think of the folks that still have no power. Right. Um, and I'm sure it, if, if their houses are cold, they can't cook. But the frustration of knowing that the town crews are ready and are held up by Eversource, um, I think that might um, add some more body to the argument about why we need to have an assigned team for here. And even if even it would have been helpful in this instance if they had give us, given you a time that they could have said, we are going to be here at X, so that you could have gotten that message yeah. out um, instead of just kind of hanging and waiting and not having any clear idea of when things were going to occur. Um, didn't work well. <laughs> Well, um, it remains to be seen. Yeah, I'm sure. 
the, the one positive is there were no reported injuries in our town and people I think are very understanding it's, it's better communications between the utility and the town that we can then disseminate to our, our uh, folks they also had IT problems people were calling to record their downed wires and to record their loss of electricity and they couldn't they couldn't get it recorded there was a lot of various oh, things that, and there was no message on the phones either I've right gotten a call on the phone saying there's people around you who are without power mm -hmm. So we didn't get the alerts from them. From them? No, but you did. You. I sent out yeah. alerts. Yeah. Um, I you sent did out a great alerts. job. Thank you. No, I really. I, really. I mean, yeah. Thank goodness. I'm sorry, Shirley. I didn't get one. I suggest that um, folks go onto our website again and the CT alert link, and make sure that the numbers are correct, and or maybe refresh your numbers. So um, landline and email, I believe they'll take. Okay, we'll continue to work on that. And I also, um, Kitch had commented on something I'd sent out. I, and she suggested, and I did send my thanks to the Public Works Department and the Grounds Department and all of the employees that worked very, very hard. They were out very, very late um, in keeping our roads and our resident safe so thank you Kitch for oh, you're welcome Th thank you I mean thank you because I think having no ever source involved in this you kept um, residents apprised of what was happening um, and I think that alleviates some of the fear and anxiety that occurs in situations like this um, and I guess go ahead and take the bow for um, the trick or trunk too because yeah, you and Eric did a great job for families that um, couldn't have a Halloween that they expected to have and I know Friday night was a blast but you know, there's still a whole bunch of folks that want to do Halloween on Halloween. And, um, and you made that, that happen. Really yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> made that happen. And that, a lot of team, a lot of teamwork. That's a lot cool. of teamwork. And I um, could not get there. <laughs> oh. yeah. But it, it was well. very nice, yeah. Good, good. And, and that, you know, I think, that's I think important. when things are going wrong, it's kind of nice to know that some, some customs can still mm -hmm. occur and, and it, you have that sense of normalcy, <laughs> even if it's only for a little while. And it keeps people in communication with does. one another. So there's a lot of help that I got from residents calling and saying, look, I, I used to work for Northeast Utility. Someone called and said, I'm going to call my, my colleagues and see how they're doing. And um, that was reassuring to me. And then another person called and said, look, we're, we're really struggling. Can you really put some pressure on to make sure our roads get clear? And so that, that kind of communication, I want to reiterate, is very helpful from selectmen as well as residents. Um, and anybody who can help because it's it's a team that gets us through these things. Public comment? Shirley, Shirley Olson, 14 Russell Avenue. I have a question. Has um, Mr. Robinson made any comments in relation to um, the town's outlook being um, changed from positive to negative? Any comments? He, we've been in communication with our finance um, advisor, financial advisor, and um, been in communications with our auditor. And um, as far as comments, I think that the governor's executive order that is now null and void has certainly helped greatly. And now we have a biennial budget. Um, so we'll have to continue that dialogue with our financial advisor, who is the company that we hired to assist us um, in working with the rating agencies. All right, thank you. General informal discussion. Um, I do recognize that this is the last meeting before the election. So I do wanna make a motion to formally thank Kathleen Richards and Fred Naus for their many years of, of help as well as expertise and, and really an awful lot of work that you've done for our town. So I'd like to make that motion. Second. Second by Kitch. Yeah. And um, we'll a little tear in our <laughs> eye no, that you you won't be sitting next to me anymore. No, and neither will Fred. Yeah. But we're very, very grateful to you. And we hope Thank that you will return. We'll often. return out there. Yeah. You're going to return yeah. out there? Yeah, maybe Are sometime. you going to be a rebel rouse? <laughs> <laughs> I want you. Yeah. 
certainly contributing to our town. And, and thank you for welcoming me. Um, and it has been a pleasure to serve with you. And I will miss you Thanks. both. I will. Yeah. And Jim, too. Jim's new. Jim's new, Jim's new right? Jim's new. A lot yeah. of changes in the last mm -hmm. couple of years, that's for sure. It's nice to have it's someone newer good. than I am. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And good luck to both of you. Yes. Thank you. So if before you jump, I do have a, an yes, informal sir. and Yeah, I, I uh, was thought that this was the last go around, but I understand there's one more, Kathy. So uh, I just heard that too. Yeah, I, okay. that, I, I believe so. I'm correct. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. So it might be a good I'll time. I'll double check. I, I yes. did have a couple of comments. So I, this I, is the last formal meeting before the election. I did want to just say it was a, it's certainly been a privilege to serve. I, I, I really enjoyed working with everybody. And uh, I think that um, in our discussions, we, we don't always agree, uh, and that's good. I think that's a good thing. Um, but I think we're always very respectful for one another's opinions, which I think is you know, so important when you're dealing with a board or a commission or, or any part of government or outside of government. So uh, again, I'd like to thank you. I, um, I wish everybody good luck. I think there, there is an election coming up. Um, Thank you. Some of you Thank may you. maybe a little more luck than others. Uh, I, I don't know <laughs> when we're passing luck out. Um, and I think due to the state's um, financial difficulties, um, you, the next two years are certainly still going to be challenging for all you folks. And also uh, there's going to be, uh, there might be some real turbulent times in the next year or two. So you're going to have your hands full. Uh, no question about it, but I, I'm impressed with everybody, and I think you'll, you'll be up to the challenge. And Susan, I just wanted to say, in regards to the budget, a personal a personal thanks. Um, you've been kind of a steady hand on the helm uh, over the past several months while all this was a budget discussion was swirling, and it was like the like the Woody Allen Woody Allen in one of his. Uh, um, plays, I, I recall, had said, uh, sometimes you're faced with uh, two paths. Um, one is going to be very difficult and it's going to be uh, very uncomfortable and uh, the other one leads to extinction and you have to choose <laughs> one of the two. So fortunately we didn't go down, you didn't have to go down that path and we didn't have to. Um, and, and again, your advocacy and your work um, for the town to, to, to really help ensure that we um, were able to have a reasonable reimbursement from the state of Connecticut, not an unreasonable. I and mean, we, we were looking at, a, at we were looking at the extinction number when we looked yes. at, at the yeah. governor's budget at that point. And and the other thing which was good, and, and I think will continue, and I think the board can future board might want to play um, an active role in that too. Are the suggestions in terms of trying to um, eliminate some of the onerous state regulations and policies that uh, are in, in place. <clears throat> I think you had a great first step in, in, in that regard, and there's some things that should really help the state and the town. But I think we really have to see how much more of that we can do as a town and, and advocate for that. But again, uh, I know it was a, it was a hard uh, slog for you, and thanks again. Thank you very much, Fred. Those are kind words. I and as you said, we have lots more to do, and I look forward to uh, the uh, hopeful opportunity to continue. Um, so it should be, should be interesting. We all continue in all capacities um, as citizens, and um, that's a good thing. So thank you. And I'll be tapping your shoulders for other things, I hope, <laughs> whatever that might be. Whatever, whatever. You just think you're done. <laughs> whatever role. Whatever role. There's, there's a, it's a great town, and it's because of the people. Um, I don't have anything in particular on the follow-up items tonight. We will in the future, I'm certain. Um, so I would entertain a motion to go into executive session, which should not last too long. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And it's just about 8 o'clock. That, that's a little bit um, fast. <laughs>